Hey, what's up folks? This is Keith and you're watching Barbara's Auto Help. I got this 95 Chevrolet Silverado back here, uh, 1500 with a 5.7 liter in it. And it has a leaking coolant outlet uh, where the heater hose goes into it. And we're gonna go ahead and tackle this project. Uh, chances are that you've already tried this and it broke off on you. Uh, if it did, well, there is a way to get it out. Uh, this isn't necessarily by the book. This is my way of doing it. And really, if you're not comfortable and mechanically in, uh, inclined, you may not you may not want to try this. You may want to take it to a shop and have a, uh, a technician do it for you. But uh, you're welcome to watch and see how I do it, and see if it might work for you. If not, like I said, take it to a shop and have a technician take care of it for you. And by the way, uh, this coolant outlet is used on various GM models with not only the 5.7 liter in it, but also the 5.0, 3.4, 3.1, and 6.0 on cars and trucks from the year 2002 to 1990. Okay, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so here are your basic tools that you're gonna to need to do this. You're gonna need a, a mechanic's hammer. Um, I like to use a, a long screwdriver, uh, kind of a skinny screwdriver there, 3 s drive ratchet, uh, also a pair of dikes or angle cutters, uh, a crooked pick. Um, you're also gonna need this uh, half inch pipe thread tap. You're going to need a socket to sit on the back of it so that you can twist it in. And uh, if you got your torque wrench um, and you want to use a socket on this, and I would actually suggest using a socket to try to take it out to begin with because you might get lucky and this thing may come out and not break. It's a 27 millimeter, and uh, you can use that to get it out with a half inch drive ratchet or whatever ratchet you got that will fit that socket. Also, Teflon tape. Um, get you some Teflon tape. Just, just in case you uh, you gouge those threads when you're taking the outlet out or getting all the uh, the four material out of there, uh, that'll give you a little added forgiveness. The outlet does come with that uh, thread sealer on it, but uh, the more the merrier, and <laughs> possibly will cover up some sins there. So uh, grab that too. And of course, you'll need a, a, a hacksaw blade here. Um, if you've got a rag or something, you want to wrap around one end while you use the other to cut. Uh, that's what you're going to need to get those slits cut into the inside uh, surface of the broke off piece in the intake manifold. So this is the part right here. You can get it at most part stores in the help section. This is a GM coolant outlet and your parts professional should be able to help you determine which actual part you need in that section there. There's a couple that look similar to this but uh, for this application this is the one you need there. Okay so let's go ahead and do some damage. Uh, be sure you got a catch pan uh, readily available to catch your coolant as it comes out because coolant will come out. Uh, you have two tangs, one on each side here. Just push them in. Just like this. Easier said than done. And this one is going to fight me. So let's see. You're supposed to be able to just push them in and pull out. But this thing's so corroded. That ain't going to happen. All right. So I already know what's going to happen, so I can't get that line out because it's so corroded. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and break it off because it's going to happen anyway. These things are so brittle. Let's go ahead and... There it goes. Didn't take much. And there it is. It's nice and flush with the intake. And I know your heart probably dropped when that happened to you. All right, I'm just going to set this off to the side and work on it later on, but uh, you see this little tang right here maybe a screwdriver up in there would get that uh, pushed in enough to to get it off but uh, you get the idea it's just locked in by those little ribs right there and this pulls right off and oh by the way it goes without saying uh, before you even get into this make sure it's nice and clean around there and you don't have any like dirt and leaves and stuff that might fall into that hole go ahead and take your screwdriver and try to scrape all this loose debris up and out of the intake manifold so that it doesn't go inside the intake manifold. Uh, you want to try to avoid as much as possible to not get any debris inside the intake manifold because uh, you don't want that going through your system and clogging things up. Using a shop vac with a modified tip on it that will actually go down in the intake manifold would be great to get some of those particles out that might accidentally fall in. Uh, you can also use long, uh, very narrow needle nose pliers and uh, grab that stuff out of the bottom there and pull it out. I'm using this uh, hacksaw blade here. If your hands are kind of tender, you can uh, wrap this hacksaw blade up with a rag or something and uh, protect your hand there. 
but we're going to saw into this thing just a little bit. It doesn't take a whole lot because that stuff is so soft. Uh, you don't want to keep sawing and saw through the uh, the threads in the intake manifold. But we're going to we're going to saw this plate thing in about four or five different places, and then we're going to proceed to dig it out. Get on the top side there a little bit. This job, guys, it really does take a little bit of finesse and some mechanical aptitude. So if you don't feel up to the task and you don't feel like you can do this and uh, do it without causing damage um, to your intake manifold and your engine, then uh, please don't do it. All right, you can see I got several slits cut into the, the inside area of the, uh, the broken off piece of the outlet. And I didn't go too deep as to go into the threads of the intake manifold because we got we to gotta screw our, our new one back in there. You have to have some threads in order to seal that up properly. So uh, we got to really be careful not to actually saw into the threads of the intake manifold. All right, now on this part right here, I'm going to use a screwdriver. And I'm going to use a screwdriver as a punch. No, a screwdriver is not a punch. So I know some people are going to, you know, give me some flack about that, but I think a screwdriver works better than a punch uh, because the, the tip is a little bit skinny, a little bit more skinny than a punch is. Uh, a punch is more, or not a punch, but a, a chisel, excuse me. The chisel is a little bit more blunt on the end there. Uh, I, I feel like this can really get in between the uh, surface of the intake and the broke off piece better than a chisel can. So that's why I'm using it. But uh, you know, you can damage your tools by you know, using them incorrectly. and. Uh, be sure you're wearing safety glasses before you do this, of course. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the screwdriver here. I'm going to take the tip, and I'm going to try to put it in between where the outside edge of that uh, broke-off piece is and the intake manifold. And I'm just going to gently tap on it. If you can see that or not. Here we go. Gently tap on it like that. Try to work it loose. There you go. And inevitably, some pieces are going to fall in there, guys. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. But you can you can see how it's kind of coming away from the wall there. Now, when you get some movement, go ahead and stop. Grab you, grab you some needle nose pliers and go ahead and take out what you can take out. The name of the game here is to prevent that stuff from going into the intake manifold. So if you can stop and grab some of this and pull it out, that's great. These are kind of hooked a little bit, so that kind of helps me out. Whoa, there we go. Fell on the ground, so what? It didn't go in the intake. Grab that little piece right there. Grab what you can. That's the name of the game. Alright, I'm going to go down here on the bottom. And I'm going to put the tip between the broke off piece and the intake manifold and just gently tap. It doesn't take a whole lot. Alright, that fell down in there. We're going to have to vacuum that out or grab that with a uh, pair of pliers. Crap, that one fell down in there too. Uh, it's, it's near impossible not to get this stuff down in your intake manifold. But you gotta get it out. Go ahead and grab what we can. Let's see if we can grab a piece that fell down. Oh, there we go, we got one. Really, I think the best way to get that stuff out is to take a, uh, uh, a shop vac with a, a wet dry vac with a modified tip that can actually is skinny enough to actually get down in there and suck all that stuff out. That'd be the best way, in my opinion. Now, at this point here, you can take uh, a pick, a crooked pick like so, and just kind of run it along those threads, kind of dig that out the rest of the way, get it really clean. And you know what? If you gotta, if you can take your shop vac and kind of stick the hose up here while you're doing this, you know, kind of like at the dentist, <laughs> you know, suck while you're working and get all that stuff out as you go, that'll prevent some of that stuff from going down in your intake too. So you gotta get creative sometimes. It's getting to the point here where I think I've got the thread cleaned up enough to where I can actually put my tap through and uh, go ahead and run it down. Now you tap here. Um, I, I'm using a socket on the end of it to run it down. Uh, if you have some uh, some wheel bearing grease or some kind of a, a sticky substance, um, nothing that will really damage the cooling system or anything like that, but if you put that 
in these little grooves right here. I'd say wheelbarrow grease would work fine for that. Uh, as you go down with it and you start to uh, twist it in, that grease will actually pick up debris. So anything that you chip off the walls, uh, most of that will be caught in the, the, the grease and you can get it out that way. So uh, if you got that, go ahead and get it. Unfortunately, I didn't think about that while I was at work or I would have got some or at the parts store. And uh, I don't have it to show you that, but that is a trick that I use at work to uh, keep debris from falling into places I don't want it to go. This is the part right here where you really, really have to be careful. And, and all the work you did with your pick earlier, cleaning out those, uh, those threads is going to pay off right here because you have to have this, this uh, tap going in at the right angle. If you have the tap cocked a little bit this way or that way, you're going to cross thread uh, your, your threads in your intake manifold. And if that happens, you're going to need a new intake manifold. So uh, take your time with that pick and try to clean those, those grooves out as much as you can or those threads out as much as you can before you do this part, okay? Now I feel pretty good about this one because I ran it in that far by hand without a whole lot of resistance. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, wrenching down on it and clean those threads out the rest of the way and get them nice and nice and clean and ready to receive the new coolant outlet. Now you don't have to totally sink this thing all the way in because that coolant outlet's not only going to go in so far and this tap actually gets wider as you go further down and you don't you don't really want to get to where you're you're starting to spread open that orifice on that intake manifold you don't you don't want to crack it so go in and then back up and, and see what you got and if you think you got enough all the threads clean then you can go ahead and clean it up real good with your shop vac and and your uh long uh even those pliers get all that crap out of there and then you just stick your coolant outlet in okay i've got my hole cleaned out uh i've got my threads cleaned out uh, I feel I feel pretty good about the job I did. I think I'm ready to go ahead and put my outlet in. Okay, now your new outlet does come with uh, some thread sealer on it. Uh, however, if you might have possibly messed up the threads just a little bit with your hacksaw or with the uh, the screwdriver, which that can happen, that's a real possibility. Um, what I've done in the past when I've done that is I wrapped a little bit more thread tape around it. I kind of got it real thick on there and uh, adds a little forgiveness. So you can try that and see how it goes for you. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and stick this in. I, I always start bolts and, and outlets and stuff with, by hand. That way I, uh, I don't cross thread them. Now you can use a 27 millimeter socket to, uh, to run this down and I've got one but I forgot my ratchet at work. So I'm going to use a, uh, a regular old adjustable wrench. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down. I'm not going to be able to tighten it down to uh, specification and you should check your repair manual for that specification on the, the torque for this thing uh, and I don't have that unfortunately but uh, I usually get them pretty snug and, uh, and I, don't, I don't know how to really describe that to you other than uh, snug enough to where it's not going to leak. Uh, and I do pressure test these afterwards to make sure that they aren't leaking. Alright, so let's go ahead and run it down and the new ones are made of a different metal they're not as brittle but they're not they're not hard and steel but uh, these shouldn't break on you when you wrench down on them all right that's good and snug right there something that can help you if you can't get that tang loose is you can take some angle cutters and because this metal is so soft you can cut right through that like so if you're having a hard time getting this outlet off the hose and do the same thing for the other side just like so and you might have to do a little twisty action on it. Gosh, dog it. There we go. You want to remove all this plastic stuff off that comes with your new outlet. So 
So you don't need this anymore. <clears throat> Good grief. Now this the tip of this right here, you, you really need to make sure that that's cleaned up really well. Um, a good stiff nylon brush would work really well on this to get all that grime and stuff off. Don't use a wire brush on it because you don't want to pit it. Something softer than the metal so you don't scratch it because you're going to have to put it back in that new outlet and it's it's got to be able to make a watertight seal. My tip all cleaned up and there is some light pitting on this. By the way, if yours has heavy pitting on it, you may actually need to replace this line that comes out of the outlet there. Anyway, let's go ahead and put this right back in there. It should just click right in. There you go. And she's in. She's not coming out. And of course, you need to put your hole down nut back in there so that this thing is going into the intake manifold at the right angle and so that it doesn't leak. And that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, this is how I do it. Uh, of course, I do fill and uh, bleed the system afterwards, and uh, you want to pressurize the system to make sure it's not leaking uh, after you do this repair. If it is leaking, then you need to assess the, the, the situation and fix it accordingly, of course. Um, there was a couple things I was, was kind of hesitant to make this video about. Uh, one, it is just a pain in the butt. It was a pain in the butt for me to do, but also it's probably going to be a bit, little bit of a pain in the butt for you to do too and it's going to be kind of hard for you to do without causing damage to your engine uh, there's a couple things i'm concerned about uh, one is uh, using a tap knowing how to use a tap uh, this video isn't really designed to, to show in detail how to properly use a tap and how to not cause damage to the intake manifold using that tap so uh, if you're not f familiar with taps and you haven't done that before maybe this job isn't for you uh, also, I was kind of concerned about the debris that gets into the intake manifold. Uh, you really have to get all that debris out. Uh, now, that said, I, I've actually dropped some stuff down the engine before uh, and not been able to retrieve it all, and it hasn't caused me any problems, but I'm not saying that's not going to happen for you. So my official stance on that is get every bit of that stuff out. Um, and thinking back on it after I edited this video, it's probably best that you actually take the intake manifold off uh, in order to do this job so that you don't actually run the risk of dropping that stuff into the, the actual cylinder head. Uh, right there where that little water jacket is, uh, there's a little passage that goes down into your cylinder head and it doesn't take much for a piece of that debris to tumble down into the cylinder head and once it's in there, it's in there. Uh, it doesn't matter how many times you flush out the system, you're not going to get it out. But uh, Will it cause damage? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I've had good luck so far, but I'm not telling you to do that. Uh, I always want to tell you how to fix your car the proper way. So if you do this, do this at your own risk. Just realize that, uh, one, you might uh, damage the threads on your intake manifold. You may damage your intake manifold and have to replace it. Uh, also, you're going to get debris inside the engine if you do it this way, uh, and you're not going to be able to get it all out. But you need to try to get it all out um, and also you run the risk of uh, clogging up passages in, in your heater core po possibly clogging up passages in the uh, the radiator too so anyway uh, enough of me blabbing on there uh, if you do this do this at your own risk uh, I know that this will help some people out there and I know that there's going to be some people that do this that mess up their vehicle um, but you know you're a grown up <laughs> you do what you think you need to do, okay? Uh, that's my best advice to you. Uh, my best advice is to take the intake manifold off to do this task, if you're going to do it. Um, if not, take it to a mechanic and let them worry about it. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it.